Hi guys, so um, I wanted to talk today about another uh, recent McFarland Toys offering. Um, this one though, not DC Multiverse, but instead uh, DC Direct. Um, if you want to see um, some of Todd McFarlane's recent DC Multiverse offerings, head over to my recent video about the Blackest Night Wave. But this video is all DC Direct. Um, so recently, Todd McFarlane announced um, his line of both uh, miniature and uh, seven inch page punchers. And we're going to see exactly what that is in just a moment. You may have heard of it, but I'm here to offer my opinions about Todd McFarlane's new page punchers line. So let's get rolling. And I am going to get going here. So um, this is the, the first figure that I want to talk about. Um, and this is, as you can probably tell, a miniature figure. Um, I believe these are three and three fourths uh, inch figures, which is a very common uh, size for, for miniature figures. You'll see them from like three inch to four inch and everything in between, sometimes five inch, but um, very common size. Um, so the first figure is Superman and he comes with a comic, which you can see there. It's a DC Universe Rebirth comic that was released in 2017. Um, with art by Pat Gleason and, and writing by uh, Tomasi, Peter Tomasi. So um, I think this figure looks fairly good, especially the, the body. Um, I'm very happy with how that looks. One thing I will note though, is the head sculpt looks a little off um, and it does look off with, with quite a few of these figures I'm gonna show you primarily because it's so small. And to me, that's a very large disadvantage of any of any, of any of the small figures is that um, you can't often get in there with a lot of detail um, with the paint or even really with the sculpt. There's a limited amount of stuff you can do. And then the additional problem with the smaller figures is that they often have limited articulation. This figure is certainly no exception. Um, he really only has, by my count, uh, what do we say, like six? uh five five no six articulation points he has waist he has um legs right or the top part of the leg he has shoulders and he has neck and so he has six articulation points um i think it was funny in one of his videos like todd was like counting a, <laughs> the cape as an articulation point i'm like no it's not okay todd fine whatever but <laughs> but anyway um, so that's slightly unfortunate. I am surprised at how little articulation he has considering Todd McFarlane's um, relative um, interest in articulation. I mean, his seven inch figures are probably the most articulated figures in history uh, in terms of action figures. So that's a little surprising. Um, it's especially surprising that they don't have uh, knee articulation. Um, I don't remember really any um, miniature figures that didn't have at least knee articulation. So that's a little surprising. Um, you know, the, this, even the superpowers line had, um, knee articulation and to, and so for me, the articulation on this figure is, um, it almost regresses to, you know, articulation even worse than what the superpowers had. Although I will say the waist articulation is a bonus. Um, so moving on to the next, oh, actually, sorry, I did want to talk very briefly about um, the comic book accuracy or not of this figure. He's fairly comic book accurate, except the blue on his suit should be much darker than it is. And they missed the red on the top of the belt. So if I go to this picture of Superman, it gives you a much better view of his costume. So you can see they got the majority of, uh, of the details. There's not a lot of like paint that they needed on this Superman, but um, they did miss the details on the top of the boots that red. Um, so anyway, uh, but then we move to the second figure and this is of course, Batman and uh, Hush Batman, no less. So based on the artwork of Jim Lee um, and I think pretty, pretty obviously so comes with that comic book with that epic Batman pose, very cool. Um, I think this figure is probably my favorite of all the miniatures. Um, I, I, really like how he looks. They didn't really miss any details in terms of the paint. The head looks the best to me. I think anytime, um, you know, these miniature figures have like the uh, whites of their eyes rather than like actual pupils, it makes it look better because there's only so much you can do with the eyes when they're so small and it just ends up looking bad. So um, because this figure has the white eyes, um, that 
basically just makes the problem null and void. Um, same articulation points as the Superman figure. Uh, I think he looks pretty darn good. Um, and by the way, one of my fellow YouTubers um, called Brad, the DC Universe Geek, he reviews stuff and um, is very, very good at it. I highly recommend checking out his channel. He was pointing out very astutely that the majority of these figures are basically just like um, miniaturized versions of already released McFarlane toys figures, like DC multiverse figures. So the Batman Hush 2 pack features a Batman that looks very, very much like this one. Um, so, so, you know, that's, that's pretty interesting to note. However, this one is cast in a blue, um, for the, for most of the figure, whereas the other one, uh, is actually has a black cowl and gloves and, and such. So I do prefer the blue mostly because it's more comic book accurate. Um, although I think the black looks nice. And then this is the third figure, um, which is a uh, flash, the flash. It's very clearly Barry Allen not Wally West because um, Wally West never wore the suit. This is Barry Allen's New 52 suit. Of, of note, however, is that the, the comic that comes with him is not one that represents the suit. Rather, it is Flashpoint, very, very famous comic book. Um, you know, you've probably read it. If not, you must read it. Um, <laughs> it's excellent. Um, but uh, in Flashpoint, he wears his classic suit. And here, he has his New 52 suit. So, I mean, to me, there seems to be a little bit of a of a disconnect between the figure and the comic. I'm not sure why they chose this, but it is what it is and it's fine. Um, I think the head actually looks fairly good. Um, you can't see the mouth very well in this picture, but I think the head actually looks pretty good. The sculpt is pretty nice. Um, they did manage to capture a lot of the sculpted detail, even though this guy's pretty small. One um, gripe I do have is that they miss the, the white around his symbol. They're supposed to be white inside the circle and they completely missed that with the paint. So another example of how these miniature figures sometimes just don't allow for very much paint um, application, or at least not detailed paint application. And then the final miniature figure here is Black Adam. And to me, like this one looks the silliest of all of them, um, especially with the head sculpt. It just looks really cartoonish. He doesn't really look like a supervillain. He looks like a cartoon character. And I don't know, I'm not very wild about the head sculpt. I think the rest of the figure looks fairly nice and fairly accurate to the source material, I might add. But um, I don't know, the head sculpt kind of ruins it for me. Um, as for the rest of the figure though, um, I really appreciate that they added the cape on this. If you look at the DC Multiverse McFarlane toys, Black Adam that was recently released as part of the Endless Winter line, that figure was absent a cape. So he did not come with a cape. Um, which sort of ruined the comic book accuracy. Like, you know, he was in his new 52 suit and yet he didn't have the new 52 cape. So it just was like a mishmash of his classic look and his new 52 look, a little strange. Um, but this one does look to be comic book accurate and that I appreciate. He comes with a, a uh, comic book from the Endless Winter um, storyline. So that's nice, but we're not done. Um, even though these are all the miniature page punters that Todd McFarlane announced, he also announced a seven inch line of page punchers, which I think look much, much better um, and don't have those same limitations that the miniature figures do. So here's the first of the seven inch page punchers. It's Superman very clearly. And um, again, you know, they're called page punchers for a reason. And that reason is because they come with a comic book. And uh, whereas the miniature series comics were not original, they were their reprints. This comic book is original. Um, it's, it has new art by Lee Bermejo, a new story by, I don't know who, but it has a new story as well and um, features these four characters, hence there are four um, action figures, Constantine, Superman, Batman, and Black Adam, which we're going to look at each in turn. I think the Superman looks really, really nice. Um, you know, is pretty much a classic Superman, other than there's some added detail on the boots and, of course, there's his chest emblem on the belt, which is interesting. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not an uncommon look for Superman to have that on the belt, but it's also not the most common look. And he also doesn't have those belt loops, um, which is uh, of note. But I think this looks very nice. Um, I would probably, you know, um, I would, I initially wasn't so wild about the head sculpt, but the more I look at it, I really do like it. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can tell the colors are very muted but that's how Lee Bermejo draws it. So you can't really, um, you can't really take off points from Todd for, for doing that because um, that's pretty much how 
Lee Bermejo draws his figure. Um, but very nice looking figure and complete with all the articulation points you could want. Pretty much all of articulation points that a McFarlane DC multiverse figure has. Um, and then this is, I think this is the best looking figure out of all four. Um, I mean, just spectacular in my mind. I mean, I think Todd just knocked it out of the park with this figure. Very frequently, Todd does a fantastic job with Batman figures, but I think he just went above and beyond with this one. Um, I mean, it really well reflects the Lee Bermejo art. Um, I really, really like this. Um, the, the gray is, you know, very dark and, and, and Batman looks brooding. He has a great facial expression. I really, really enjoy this figure. The detail is just, um, is just, you know, over the top in a good way. Um, re he's just replete with so much detail. Um, I mean, just pure awesomeness here with Batman. Comes with the battering, which looks very good and very accurate to Lee Bermejo's art. If you've read, you know, Joker, for example, or um, Batman Noel, yada, yada. Um, but I, I mean, I cannot applaud this figure enough. I think he just looks stunning and pro maybe possibly the best Batman head sculpt ever, possibly. Um, but then we get to John Constantine, who I'm most, whom I'm most excited for because We've not received a John Constantine from DC Multiverse yet. All these other figures we've already received from DC Multiverse, um, or all these other characters, I should say. Um, so he has, um, you know, very classic John Constantine look. Nothing wild and crazy about Lee Bermejo's design for John Constantine, which I appreciate um, because I'm just looking for sort of a basic John Constantine to add to my Multiverse line. At the same time, this guy looks really, really nice. And at least for me, I think he's the, he looks like the best John Constantine action figure ever made. Um, I, I really have very few doubts about that. Of course, I can't say that for certain until I get him in hand, but he really looks very, very nice. Comes with two accessories, one being a book of, of like glyphs or a book of spells, it looks like. Um, so I'm glad he comes with that. And then I think the, the best accessory is that um, it's sort of incantation or magic effect which you can't really see it very well, but it, it has a, a an attached hand. So basically in order for John Constantine to use the glyph, you have to take off one of his hands and then put this on there. Um, so anyway, uh, and then of course comes with a typical card and stand, all these figures do. So then we get to um, the final figure, which is Black Adam. And this is probably the fig probably the design that departs most from Black Adam's uh, typical design, very, very radically different. So this is designed by Lee Bermejo. This is the look that Lee Bermejo wanted for his, for his figure, um, for his, for the character. I shouldn't say for the figure, for the character. And wow, is it radically different? I mean, the head, I mean, the, the head design looks pretty much the same, but otherwise the rest of the figure, I mean, I've never seen a Black Adam that looks like this. Do I like the design? Um, it's okay. I, I don't know. I'm not wild about what's going on around like the belt area or the groin area. I don't know why it has to be so overly complicated. Um, I don't really mind the shoulder pauldrons or the, or the cape or the um, bracers, the boots. I don't know. The boots look more like they would fit a Wonder Woman character, Wonder Woman figure rather than a Black Adam. I don't know. They look a little strange. Like actually the top of the boots is essentially like the Wonder Woman symbol. <laughs> if you notice that, it's pretty much the Wonder Woman symbol. So I'm not really sure like what Lee Bermejo was thinking there other than probably that he thought it looked cool. But um, yeah, I much rather would have had Lee Bermejo just design like either a classic Black Adam or like an Infinity 2 Black Adam. Just pick one instead of doing something so radically different as this. Um, but I do think he looks, he looks pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, he comes with those lightning effects, which, you know, if you don't want to use them with Black Adam, you can use them with pretty much any other ca character that uses lightning, whether that be Black Adam or sorry, not Black Adam, Black Lightning or um, uh, I don't know who else. Um, maybe you could put them on the Flash character as like, you know, lightning when he's running. I don't really know. Um, Black Vulcan, if you have a, like the DC Universe Classics Black Vulcan. Anyway. There are a variety of characters you could probably use this with. Um, so they, th those do look very good, very good accessories. Um, uh, but overall, I am very excited about both Page Puncher lines, but especially the seven inch. I think there's a lot of potential here for the DC Direct 
page punchers line seven inch that these all these figures um possibly with the exception of black adam look really nice i mean actually they all look really nice it's just i don't happen to like black adam's suit design so anyway um but i'm very i am very um excited about this i probably will not end up picking up any of the seven inch page punchers other than john constantine just because i feel like we've received so many supermans and so many especially so many batmans from mcfarland toys that I just am not, I certainly need more Supermans and Batmans, quite honestly. Like I have the ones I want. I've picked up the ones I want and I don't expect to be buying for them anymore. So um, no, but but no, I really, I really applaud Todd for his efforts here. I will be picking up the John Constantine since I think he looks really good. And I will on all likelihood pick up the miniature page punchers um, just because I have not been collecting the Spin Master miniatures or the Spin Master three and three quarters, and I kind of want to do something with that. So, um, so yeah, but really, really exciting stuff, and I'm looking forward to see what to seeing where uh, Todd McFarlane takes this line, especially the seven inch line. I think it has a lot of great things ahead of it. Um, one small note before I conclude this video is that it's really weird that Todd McFarlane is calling these DC Direct, or I guess like DC is calling it DC Direct because typically historically. DC Direct has been like, quote unquote, direct from the source. That was like their motto, i.e. that DC Direct did not have to go through an intermediary like McFarland Toys in order to make action figures, right? They had DC Direct. They had their own sort of action figure making company, right? Which was DC itself or DC Direct. It was just a part of DC. So it's not really truly DC Direct. That being said, as long as Todd McFarland can keep everything on his can can like keep doing things at a really really high quality um and keep up a good pace of putting out figures um i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what he puts out and i think his figures all these figures look really good so i can't complain too much yet i just hope that he doesn't take on more than he can handle so anyway that's my two cents on the dc direct page punchers hope you enjoyed the video Please like, subscribe, do all the great stuff, comment. Um, and thank you so much for sort of supporting my channel. I'm a very small channel, so I'm trying to grow. So if you could help me grow, that'd be, that'd be great. But thank you. Go DC and have a great day.